Thank you for tuning in to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. I am your co-host, Sarah. I am joined, of course, by Tate himself. We have a great show planned for you today. We'll be starting off talking about last night's game two between the Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. Moving from there into uh, two stories from the MLB, um, robot umpires and also the Yankees payroll. And then segment three, we'll be covering uh, Roger Goodell talking about the the potential possibility for an 18 game season. Segment four, moving away from sports, a viral Amazon video that you're not going to want to miss. And you're also going to want to stick around for segment five because we have not one, but two Florida man stories to talk about today. As we get started, I want to, as always, ask you to like and subscribe to the show. That really does help. Also, if you um, would like to leave a comment or a question, you may do so by going to GSMC Sports excuse me, gsmcpodcast.net. We do get a lot of questions and comments during the show. And if you want us to uh, see your question and comment and respond to it, going to gsmcpodcast.net and leaving a tip or a donation, we'll put that question and comment and or comment right at the top of our list, ensuring that we see it so we can talk about it. Again, the link is gsmcpodcast.net. Net. And now I am going to just turn that off and say good morning, Tate. Hello, Miss Sarah. Sarah, you're, you're starting to get in the role of things a little I'm bit trying. here. I know we've had some technical difficulties your first week here. You're sweet to say we. Adjusting to the changes, using a different system. And so, but you're, you're starting to flow. You're, you're, getting, you're getting to that to your sweet spot all you're almost there i appreciate that <laughs> um, uh how is your day going so far my day is awesome That's um i we've been having some technical difficulties moving to where we're our new studio area and so adjusting to that we've had a few you know speed bumps let's just say yeah. uh but other than that no i'm good good so I excellent. My, I cut my thumb this morning. That was my thumb. So that was me uh, showing you my delightful band aid that is on my finger today. I'm a klutz. I don't know if you knew that. Okay. Yeah, I kind of. I know these things, <laughs> but they don't know these things. I am a klutz. So now, now you know. Um, shall we move into our first topic of the day? Let's do it. All right. Let me just quickly get everything set up, and then I will say that the Boston Celtics have taken a commanding 2-0 lead in the Eastern Conference Finals after a resounding 126-110 victory over the Indiana Pacers in that game too. Led by Jalen Brown's impressive 40-point performance and a strong second half showing from Jason Tatum, the Celtics now have a clear advantage in the series. However, the Pacers face significant challenges, particularly with all-star point guard Tyrese Halliburton sidelined due to a hamstring injury. Halliburton's absence looms large for the Pacers, who now head back to Indiana, trailing 2-0 in the series. His injury adds to the uphill battle for Indiana, who must regroup and find ways to compete without their playmaking guard. Meanwhile, the Celtics continue to showcase, showcase their offensive firepower, with Brown's standout performance highlighting their dominance in Game 2. Key takeaways from the game include Brown's stellar showing, the impact of Halliburton's injury on the Pacers' prospects, and the Celtics' offensive efficiency in the second half. As the series shifts to Indianapolis for games three and four, both teams face pivotal moments in their quest for a spot in the NBA Finals. Now, Tate, as we get into this, this is what you were talking about when we covered game one, a little worried about uh, Indiana losing game two. So first, let's just, you're going to give me your thoughts, but I also want to know how significant do you think Halliburton's injury is for the Pacers? Honestly, this is a big injury. I mean, this is major because the Celtics were already up against it. Any, I mean, not the Celtics, the Pacers were up against it anyway. Uh, you can't go up against a team that's better defensively, a better shooting team, a better offense. They're just a better team all the way around. And then you're going to lose one of your main stars, one of your main cogs in the wheel that's going to, that makes you guys go. 
this is a big loss. I mean, this is a big loss. And I don't know if they're going to be able to come back from that. Um, yeah. And you go back and you look at this and you think about game one and how they had game one in the palm of their hand and they let it go. This game one is more important now than ever because not seeing these things you don't see in the future that hot Tyrese Halliburton could be out, not only could be out, but could be out a few games. Taking game one allows them the room to go back to Indiana and even if they slip up and they lose a game in Indiana, then they have that opportunity to, you know, kind of bounce back. But now with them slipping up in game one where they should have won, they're down 2-0. They go into game three. They drop game three. Now you're worried about a sweep and Halliburton, Halliburton maybe never getting in this game. I mean, getting back in the series whatsoever. Um, and then let's talk about the game. Jalen Brown was on fire. 40 points, five rebounds, two assists. There was, there was just no answer for uh, Jalen Brown. I mean, it, it's... You know, he, in this game, having two superstars of this caliber uh, is just, has just been just amazing. He went 14 to 27 shooting. Uh, people were saying, you know, he was, he was motivated because of the all NBA snub uh, and things like that. But if, if he was, he definitely showed he was motivated. Uh, looking around and then on a night when you look around and Jason Tatum, who still had, like I said, 23.6 rebounds and five assists, he didn't really have a great night as a whole. Uh, I think he kind of, I kind of felt like he kind of struggled offensively. Uh, it's kind of hard to say some struggle when you, when they, they have 23 points, but he didn't have, it wasn't, he, his impact wasn't. Um, as as it normally is, but having you know Brown take up that slack and the two of them working together just made them absolutely yesterday just unstoppable. Um, and, and and I love this slide here because it's just talking about the keys to the game. And you can't you can't have a situation where you you have J, uh, Jason Brown go for forty, and then absolutely dominate on the offensive side, and then Indiana was not able to handle. I mean, pretty much shutting down uh, Indiana in many in many ways as far as affecting affecting them on how they the, the re, offensive rebounds and things for Indiana during the game, it became a major issue. Their defensive strategy, the Celtics defensive strategy, I thought was played, you know, a pivotal role offensively. I mean, it was a perfect game for the, for the Celtics and a very rough game for Indiana, who who was having problems rebounding, losing maybe their the most important player on their team, him and Siakam. I don't know what you what you can do, especially when you're starting to look around and you're saying uh, you're not getting. I, I unless a miracle happens, the way everything sounds, you're not getting Tyrese Halliburton back for game for game three. And it is a strong possibility you may not have him back for game four. I'm not a doctor. I haven't seen him. But when I start looking at the situation and I start seeing that, it is now a situation where after game one, you're thinking like, man, this could be a great series, especially if they were taking that game one. But even losing that game one, Indiana has has proven to be a much tougher team on the road 
I mean, not on the road, but at home. So really wanted to see what they could do against the Celtics when they're at home. But now with Tyrese Halliburton out, I I'm I don't I don't like the chances. So nobody wants you know you mentioned this you don't know what the motivation was behind those those 40 points but uh, and nobody wants to be snubbed but whatever it was it seemed to work so, <laughs> going, oh, no. going it, forward if you can do another 40 point game how how, yeah. how important do you think browns obviously it was important to this game but do you think they need to continue that level of playing no i mean, see honestly the celtics are the better team on both sides of the ball. Indiana needs to get lucky. The problem is they've already gotten lucky. Game one was their game where they caught the Celtics slipping. Uh, game two is kind of what most people were expecting in this series was what, what happened last night. But game one, they caught them, but they didn't capitalize on it. Instead of being in this situation 1-1, headed home for the next two games, they're down 0-2, headed home for the next two ga games, minus Ty Tyrese Halliburton. That's a little too much to deal with. Even even heading home. like Yeah, I mean, the Pacers, have, the Pacers have, this playoff series, have performed incredibly well on when they're home. Uh, they haven't really looked great on the road most most of the games, but I think they they the defense intensity kicks up, their shooting improves, and I could definitely see them really you know showing a big improvement in game three. I just don't know losing the person the caliber of Tyrese Halliburton is more than what they can handle. We'll see how it goes when we talk about game three. After that happens, we're going to go ahead and take our first break of this episode. When we come back, we'll be moving to Major League Baseball and talking first about robot umpires. Stay tuned. You're watching the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports, and we will be right back. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I feel like I'm losing my mind. Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign, a sign. I want to be the greatest. Everybody on the face shit. I look around and feel like everybody is the fakest. I make this every day and I'm impatient. Hoping one day I blow up from the basement. Statement, the top is so vacant. I don't need shit that I think is amazing. Waiting for my day when I'm playing. Sold out shows for a thousand faces. Hey, give me that crown. Get in my way and to be put down. It ain't your place. All this my town. If I want that shit, then I'll get it right now. I'm losing it. The noose it fits. Some loose shit. A stupid myth. You choose to live or choose to dip. You choose to fight or lose your grip and lose a gift. Oh. I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Please, Lord, give me a sign A sign I feel like I'm losing my mind Is everybody in the world blind? Welcome back to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. Before the break in segment one, we were talking about the game between game two between the Boston Celtics and the Indiana Pacers. And now we are moving on, as I mentioned, to Major League Baseball, talking about a couple of different things, but starting with robot umpires, which sounds I don't know, more exciting. I don't know. It's not what I picture, uh, <laughs> but I'm picturing sci-fi. So. Let's go ahead and so she we go. still having those technical difficulties, aren't Thank they? You. <laughs> Thank you for uh, letting me know that I still was on the last segment. I appreciate that. Okay, no problem. Um, I I need a robot umpire or a robot assistant, uh, something. So okay, so now League, now you're doing good. Major League Baseball. 
has announced that the implement that the implementation of robot home plate umpires is unlikely hap- unlikely to happen in 2025 due to ongoing technical issues. Commissioner Rob Manfred disclosed this development during a news conference following an owners meeting. Despite efforts to test the automated ball strike system ABS in minor leagues since 2019, the expected progress has not been achieved. In Class AAA parks, the system has been used this year with robots officiating the first three games of each series and humans with a challenge system taking over for the last three games. The preference among players, as gathered from MLB's meetings with them, leans towards a challenge-based ABS system. Mm -hmm. This system would allow catchers to maintain their framing skills, which are considered a vital part of the game. Initially, there was a belief that absolute accuracy in calling balls and strikes would be wildly supported. However, feedback from players highlighted potential negative impacts on the game, such as changes in the type of athletes recruited from the ca- for the catcher position, emphasizing offense over defensive skills. MLB has slowed its pace of innovation after the successful introduction of the pitch clock in 2023, opting for a more deliberate approach to ensure accuracy and through consider- a thorough consideration of any new rule changes. Discussions with the Players Association on the specifics of an automated strike zone have not yet commenced, as there is no consensus on its exact implementation. All right, Tate, thoughts on robot umpires and uh, moving forward. Okay, this is one of those things. I know if you are a diehard baseball fan, you're probably against this. But I feel like this is an example of when you look around and you see the situation where the game is not progressing. Uh, it's it's too slow to progress, and I feel like it loses a lot of its younger fans. When you look at the Major League Baseball and their their fans, they're much. It's a much older uh, group than than other sports, and I think a big part of that is the the slowness to adapting to technology. One of the things that I have always hated about baseball, and I'm a baseball fan, I'm, I've always supported the Yankees, is this whole umpire's human approach where they can't adjust to technology. You have one pitcher, because he's a big name guy, he gets a much larger strike zone. Uh, it's adjusted. Guys get bigger names guys that's been in the league a little bit longer they get more of a benefit of the doubt but a young guy or a no-name guy doesn't get the same cachet that goes with it uh umpires having way too much influence on the outcome of the game i have always been in favor of the robot robot umpires where you have a true strike zone uh and it shouldn't be oh he's he's catching he's catching the corner but when you really look at it it's actually a ball but because he's this big name guy with a big name contract they're they're willing to give more of the benefit of the doubt and that's been that's been kind of an issue i think if they made the adjustments yes i think there would be a different caliber of catcher maybe uh but i think a lot of other players who have been in this game would have a lot more opportunities because it's a much it becomes a more fair game where you don't have to guess okay where's the strike zone it comes down to if you have an electronic strike zone in my opinion then it comes down to who's better not who has an who's getting an extra advantage it's here this is what the strike zone is the pitcher must throw within that strike zone and the hitter it's now the pitcher's skill against the hitter's skill without an umpire giving the benefit of the doubt or lack of benefit of doubt and making the strike zone a little bit bigger for this guy because he's a bigger name i've always been against it I've always hoped that they would go with an electronic strike zone. I know my my take on this one isn't as popular as a lot of 
hardcore baseball fans, but this is my show, and I'm going to give you my opinion. <laughs> As you are entitled to. Um, do you do you do you think that slowing down? Do you think they're just slowing down, or do you think that this is slowing down in advance of just not moving forward with it? I from from it, it's a. I think it's a screeching halt. Um, players are not going to, players don't adjust to change well. Owners don't adjust to change well. Yes, this recently adding the pitch clock in, which was a huge success. Uh, people just, the baseball, baseball teams do not and organizations do not adjust to change. This is the way it's always been done. This was whack when Babe Ruth did it. This is where, this is the way Ty Cobbs did it. But yeah, they also smoked cigarettes, drank before games, and was hugely out of shape as well. Things change with time. We're in, we're in a different world where, where athletes are bigger, stronger, faster, and Technology needs to keep up with it. I would love to see it. I, I I hope I'm wrong, but when you see even talking about when they when they talk to the players and ask the players their opinion, players voted for you know they like the old system better than embracing technology. The technology makes the game a much better game, a truer game where I'm more intrigued by who really uh, who's really uh the battle between the pitcher is is he really the best pitcher in the world or I don't like thinking, hey, this pitcher, he's get you know he's going to get he's getting a larger strike zone than other people. So, he's getting more strikeout than 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 a lot of other younger players or players that are not as known. Uh, I've never liked that about baseball. I like the fact that you know what the strike zone is. Every it's absolutely fair, and it makes for a more intriguing game, in my opinion. All right. Well, you mentioned the Yankees and our next half of this segment is the Yankees. So let me go ahead and get that slideshow up. All right. The New York Yankees um, are facing financial concerns, according to their owner, Hal Steinbrenner. Despite their success, Steinbrenner stated to the New York Post that the team's record high payroll is unsustainable, citing the financial burden of the luxury tax. The Yankees opened the season with a $296.6 million payroll, the third largest in MLB history, trailing only the New York Mets and Los Angeles Dodgers. Steinbrenner emphasized the need for financial prudence, expressing his disbelief in the necessity of a $300 million payroll to win a championship. This statement comes at a crucial time as the Yankees navigate potential contract negotiations, particularly with star player Juan Soto, whose impending free agency looms large. Soto's performance this season positions him for a lucrative contract, potentially one of the largest in MLB history. While Steinbrenner acknowledged the financial challenges, he also provided optimism for the future, noting the considerable amount of money expected to come off the books next, se next offseason. This financial flexibility could provide the Yankees with opportunities to address roster needs while navigating potential departures in free agency. So how do you feel about Steinbrenner's statements? How are you feeling about going forward with the Yankees and this? Just how are you feeling in general about all this? Okay, now this one is, this one's kind of funny. I'm a Yankees fan, so make sure this is clear. But I'm an, I'm an old school Yankee fan. And baseball has gotten to the point where the Yankees are claiming poor. <laughs> <laughs> the, the the richest baseball organization in all of sports, the the organization that invented blowing up the salary. I mean, huge salaries. Whether it was in the sixties, it was in the seventies, it was in the eighties, nineties. Uh, you know, uh, that's you know that's what the Yankees were known for bringing in the big name star, having them uh, on the Yankees. That, that's what, that was George Steinbrenner's way. Uh, 
Man, I I feel like George Steinbrenner's turning over his grave right now, thinking about like you know hearing hearing a Yankee or and a Steinbrenner saying we get we we have to use uh, financial prudence. Uh, you know, we gotta we gotta worry about the salary and how much we're gonna spend. This is a br great example of it's a new world, and but they're not wrong, partially because of what the Yankees did in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, which which made salaries go through to astronomical levels. It is now to the point where even the Yankees are having issues. Players in baseball are the, the salaries are have ballooned to such high levels. And I don't know if it's good for the game. When you when you look around and you you look at a player making six hundred seven hundred million dollars, uh, you baseball. It's one of those things where how much money before how much does these salaries keep going up before you start hearing about and it's already inklings out there that teams are starting to lose money, or there are there are teams in baseball. Before the first pitch of the season is thrown, you already know this season's over, next season's over, and the seasons after that is over. You're not competing. You're you're going to do every. You know the team doesn't have the money to compete on the levels of a Dodgers or a Mets or a Yankees, and so. Teams have to be more lucky or more crafty with who the, as their farm systems. If they're a poor franchise to make it uh, because of these, because of the salary income uh, issues. But it's funny hearing a Steinbrenner, a Steinbrenner complain and say that they have to be you you don't need a 300 million dollar salary uh you know roster to win a world series that you can do it on a little bit of let's say cheaper or a little bit of a little bit of a discount daddy warbucks is now asking looking for a cheaper way of doing things never thought i would see that never thought i would hear that and i think it's absolutely hilarious you 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 answered my follow up question. Before. I was going to ask you about that that, that assessment about the not needing three hundred million to yes. win a World Series. So again, going forward, we'll see what happens. Are they are are they as poor as <laughs> you shouldn't say Yankees and poor in the same? Yeah, sentence, that's right? that's kind of like Elon Musk saying, "Man, I don't know if I need that that uh, that twenty million dollar uh, yacht. Maybe I can get away with a fifteen million dollar yacht." That's kind of the way I feel like that that statement was. Oh, okay. so. it's probably not for anyone. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and take our next break. When we come back, we'll be moving. Uh, we've done basketball. We've talked about baseball. We'll be moving on to football and that possible 18 game season stay tuned you are watching the G the andrew tate show by gsmc sports and we will be right back for the best and latest podcasts available anywhere go to the podcast app on your cell phone and type in gsmc to access free content rich podcasts on health and wellness, book reviews, sports, entertainment, relationships, social media, movies, technology, finance, and even weird news. Subscribe and download the GSMC Podcast Network's family of shows. Available everywhere podcasts are found. Welcome back to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. Before the break, we were talking about Major League Baseball. First, we're talking about uh, the the league not moving forward with robot umpires in the 2025 season, and then talking about the Yankees payroll. We are moving into football now. Uh, let me get that set up. 
one second transitions that's transitions. That's, that's, that's an issue <laughs> and a theme song to play while i'm doing oh. transitions nfl commissioner roger goodell's recent discussion about the potential transition to an 18 game regular season have ignited a flurry of debates and speculation within the league among, and among fans alike the prospect of extent, extending the regular season a move that would fundamentally alter the dynamics of the nfl schedule has garnered both support and skepticism from various stakeholders Reports from NFL Network's Judy Batista suggested that discussions between league officials and the NFL Players Association regarding the 18-game season have already begun, indicating a proactive approach to addressing the matter. Goodell's comments following the NFL spring meeting further underscored the seriousness with which the league is considering this significant change. One of the primary concerns surrounding the potential transition is the impact on player safety. Goodell has ex emphasized the importance of ensuring the well-being of NFL players amidst discussions of expanding the regular season. With football being an inherently physical sport, the addition of two more regular season games raises questions about the increased risk of injuries and player fatigue over an extended season. Furthermore, logistical considerations such as scheduling and revenue distribution remain key points of contention. While an extended regular season could mean additional revenue for both players and teams, negotiations between the league and the NFLPA are necessary to address the financial implications and ensure equitable distribution of profits. Goodell's remarks during the spring meeting highlighted the league's commitment to maintaining the quality of the game while exploring opportunities for growth and expansion. However, any decision to move forward with an 18-game regular season would require careful consideration of various factors, including player welfare, fan engagement, and the overall integrity of the sport. As discussions evolve and negotiations progress, the future of NFL seasons hangs in the balance. The league's willingness to engage in open dialogue with players and stakeholders signals a proactive approach to, the addressing, to addressing the evolving needs of the sport while upholding its core values. In summary, while the prospect of an 18-game regular season presents both opportunities and challenges for the NFL, it remains a topic of considerable debate and deliberation within the league. The outcome of these discussions will undoubtedly shape the future of football and redefine the NFL landscape for years to come. So, Tate, definitely pros and cons to moving to an 18-game season. Give me your thoughts. You're not getting any cons from me. <laughs> <laughs> I've been wanting an 18 game season. I did not want a 17 game season. I, the NFL wanted to go to 18 games and the players really pushed back on it. And part of that was dealing with player safety. And that was like the big battle. And I didn't understand they're talking about more games and things of that nature. First off, they need to do away with the preseason games. Preseason games, you know, charging. If you're a fan and you buy season tickets, you have to buy uh, the preseason games as well. I don't think teams need a preseason. Uh, you, have you have OTAs, you have training camp, you have everything else. Uh, it's been proven that you don't really need as many, you don't need as many of the preseason games get rid of them completely but then move it to an 18 game season i love i've always loved the 18 game season not only do i think it should be an 18 game season i would like to see the season extended a little bit more i would like to see an 18 game season with each team getting three bye weeks so that you know, after everyone, after the first four weeks of the season, there's a bye week for some of the teams in the following week, another bye week. Then after week eight, you have a bye week and then another bye week after week 12, rolling into ending the season. When you talk about player safety and completing a season and, and making a healthy season, I would like to, uh, having three extra, having three bye weeks and extending the season a little bit longer makes it so it's enjoyable to the fans. You address player safety. You give players a chance to get healthy uh, throughout the season. It's great for television partners. It's great for the league. It benefits everyone. 
Uh, and most people that are hardcore fans are saying, how about an, you know, one extra game a year? We got to, you know, we moved to 17, the world didn't end. Moving to 18, I think would be absolutely perfect. Uh, for everyone that says, you know, the rule, I mean, all the records are going to fall. The records are going to fall. Guys, guess what? The records are going to fall anyway. It's a new NFL. So all those passing records from a long time ago, they're done. They're going to be done. Very soon, all of those records that you're used, that you're, you're, you're looking at, are going to fall. Then you've already added in a 17th game. If you're worried about records, an extra, that 17th game is going to make is already in place. Make it 18. Give teams a three, uh, a three, uh, about three buys in throughout the year. I think you would end up with a much better game, a much better situation uh, for players, uh, owners, uh, league partners. It benefits everyone to do this. And you, you know you not only you not only are you adding an extra game, but adding those extra bye weeks, I think is huge. Um, I would be, I was against the seventeenth game if they didn't add more bye weeks, and they didn't. They just gave it. They just one bye week and an extra game. I think that's not enough. That's where, that's where I push back on this. There should be more bye weeks in the, in the NFL season just because after the, you, if you've ever worked with an NFL team or been around an NFL team, and I have, after the first three weeks of the season, everyone in the NFL is injured. After the first three weeks of the season, teams are, players are struggling. Having that bye week after week four gives gives teams you sp you break that up uh, between over two weeks, but you have a bye week then. Then you play another four games, then another bye week, and then four more to finish the season. I think would make the union happy. It would make broadcast partners happy. It would make advertisers happy. Uh, it would players everyone. It's a better situation by doing that. I care more about adding more bye weeks than anything. Do you think that they are going to eventually move to this eighteen game season? Yes, yes. I they they will move to eighteen games. Uh, I don't think that you know. No, you don't hear anything about adding bye weeks. What they're what they're looking at is the NFL is more about we don't want to lose revenue so what they're looking at is going to an 18 game season cutting out more of the preseason because everyone kind of agrees preseason games you can get the same model reps get the same information and otas and training camp that you don't need to have these games inner squad inner squad scrimmages and things of that nature so the NFL will eventually do away with the preseason games and, and go down to one or no preseason games and then eventually go to an 18 game season. But is it going to an 18 game season without adding bye weeks, potentially kind of shooting themselves in the foot? Uh, I don't think the NFL looks at it that way. Uh, everyone, when you look at players, Players and unions, their big issue with adding, going from a 16 game season to a, to a 17 game season was player safety. The big issue and the big pushback with going from a 17 game season to an 18 game season is player safety. But when the league looks at adding that extra game and television partners look at adding that extra game, everyone looks at not player safety, how much money can be brought in. That's been the issue. My approach by adding the extra bye weeks addresses player safety, but also addresses what the owners want as well. There's not enough focus. There's too much focus on the fact that they're going to 18 games 
with everyone not paying attention to what the players uh, in the union want, which is more player safety. But and the the I kind of feel like the NFL's approach to dealing with that is giving a larger piece of the pie, making sure the players make more money without addressing player safety uh, when it goes to a, more games. In this way, address everyone can get what they want. Address player safety and address getting to that 18 games, which every which everyone in the front office really wants. All right. Well, thank you for that. Uh, we are going to go ahead and take another break. When we come back, moving away from sports and um, you don't normally think about a, a product review as being all of that entertaining, but we are going to share one with you that will hopefully you'll find entertaining. So <laughs> let's go ahead and take that break and we will be right back. Looking for your daily fix of sports talk without having to pay for it? GSMC Sports Network is available on YouTube. Just search GSMC Sports Network. Get your fix of daily sports talk shows on YouTube absolutely free. NFL, college football, NBA, MLB, MMA, UFC, fantasy football, and so much more. GSMC Sports Network has shows running all day long with new sports shows starting every two hours. Just like on your favorite for cable sports channel except gsmc sports network is absolutely free just search gsmc sports network on youtube to catch one of your new favorite shows like the gsmc college football podcast chip shot football podcast hoops and heels women's sports podcast gsmc basketball podcast and so many more check it out for yourself gsmc sports network now available on youtube absolutely free Search GSMC Sports Network on YouTube right now. Welcome back to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. Before the break, we were talking about the potential of moving to an 18-game season for the NFL. Uh, moving away from sports now as we get into our other segments. Tate, have you ever left a product review? <laughs> it's very vague um I, I have one or two times it's not something i do on a regular basis uh yeah so very rarely here and here's one of the weird things about product reviews and and yelp reviews and all of this most times people don't write a review unless it's something bad yes if you go to a restaurant or you try a product and it works exactly the way you expected it you're like it was supposed to be that way you use it you eat it you do whatever and you just move on but if it slices your hand or tastes really bad or there's a wombat in your can. <laughs> you know? I'm writing a review if there's a wombat in yeah, a can of whatever. If it's something in the can of wombat. Yeah, if, if it's something negative, people are people cannot wait to write a negative review. And that's why a lot of times you find situations where people are there you know you listen to youtube and every everyone even this show it's like we 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 beg you to write a review and hey by the way i would like for you to write a review for this show mostly nice nice things say the nice sweet things about sarah you know about your boy here right write some nice things about us because it matters now back to back to that you know Product reviews are important. Hit me with what's going on. They, they are important, and sometimes they're helpful. They're not usually entertaining. Um, now, if this one is real, I, I don't even care if it's real because <laughs> whoever wrote it clearly yeah, has a, a, a career in entertainment ahead of them. So um, this is written uh, after been told. It, 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 it contains, it's, it's about male genitalia in part. So oh. just be forewarned <laughs> okay. that there's some colorful language. Um, 
after having been told that my danglies, it's clearly written by a, a British person, um, after been told, being told that my danglies look like an elderly Rastafarian, <laughs> I decided to take the plunge and buy some of this, this being Veet um, hair removal for men specifically, oh. as uh, previous shaving attempts had only been mildly successful, and I nearly poked my back out trying to reach the more difficult bits. Being a bit of a romantic, I thought I would do the deed on the missus's birthday as a bit of a treat. <laughs> I'm going to try to get through this without laughing. I ordered it well in advance, and working in the North Sea, I considered myself a bit above of some of the characters writing the previous reviews and wrote them off as soft office types. Oh, my fellow sufferers, how wrong I was. I waited until the other half was tucked up in bed, and after having some vague hints, or giving some vague hints about a special surprise, I went down to the bathroom. You're not helping. Initially, all went well, and I applied the gel and stood waiting for something to happen. I didn't have long to wait. At first, there was a gentle warmth, which in a matter of seconds was replaced by an intense burning <laughs> and a feeling I can only describe like being given a barbed wire wedgie by two people intent on hitting the ceiling with my head. Religion hadn't featured much in my life until that night, but I suddenly became willing to convert to any religion to stop the violent burning and the, the, around the turn shuttle and what seemed like the destruction of the meat and two veg. Struggling to not bite through my bottom lip, I tried to wash the gel off in the sink and only succeeded in blocking the plug hole with a mat of hair. Through the haze of tears, I struggled out of the bathroom, across the hall, into the kitchen. By this time, walking was not really possible, and I crawled the final yard to the fridge in the hope of some form of cold relief. I yanked the freezer drawer out and found a, and found a tub of ice cream, tore the lid off, and positioned it under me. <laughs> The relief was fantastic, but only temporary as it melted fairly quickly and the fiery stabbing soon returned. Due to the shape of the ice cream tub, I hadn't managed to give the starfish any treatment and I groped around in the drawer for something else as I was sure my vision was going to fail fairly soon. I grabbed the bag of what I later found out was frozen sprouts and tore it open, trying to be as quiet as I, as I could. Uh, as I did so, I took a handful of them and tried in vain to clench some between the cheeks of my <clears throat> rear. Uh, this not being, this was not doing the trick as some of the gel had found its way up the chutney channel and it felt like the space shuttle was running its engines behind me. This was probably and hopefully the only time in my life I was going to wish there was a gay snowman in the kitchen, which should give you some idea of the depths I was willing to sink in order to ease the pain. The only solution my pain crazed mind could come up with was to gently ease one of the sprouts where no oh. bed had gone before. Unfortunately, alerted by the strange grunts coming from the kitchen, the other half chose that moment to come and investigate and was greeted by the sight of me, arse in the air, strawberry ice cream dripping from my bell end, pushing a sprout up my <clears throat> rear end while muttering, oh, that feels good. Oh, shit. Understandably, this was a shock to her and she let out a scream that as I had as the, uh, that I hadn't heard her come in caused an involuntary spasm of shock in myself which resulted in the sprout being ejected at quite some speed in her direction I can understand that having a sprout farted against your leg at 11 o'clock at night in the kitchen probably wasn't the special surprise she was expecting and having to explain to the kids the next day what the strange hollow in the ice cream was didn't improve my status. So to sum it up, Veet removes hair, dignity, and self-respect. Okay. Take it away. Okay. I know you have thoughts. <laughs> All right, first, ladies and gentlemen, don't be dipping your Ben and Jerry's in the ice cream, okay? That's the first thing I want to say straight off the top. Sec don't, don't, don't dip your Ben and Jerry's in the ice cream. Second thing is, this dirty dude, I, he's going to leave after he's done. He put that in the freezer. You don't put that back in the, ice, in, the, in, the, in the refrigerator? Why would you ever have to explain to your kids why there was a divot in the ice cream? That, that ice cream should have been in the middle. Exactly. 
and it should not be uh it's you and the ice cream shouldn't have a shape of twigs and berries going on in there either <laughs> that is not a ben and jerry flavor <laughs> okay first off i don't think so <laughs> i don't know yeah. all the ben and jerry flavors. uh what's that one as a uh, fudge the fudge one <laughs> <laughs> well, this is that flavor. All right. Second thing is, listen, if you get caught stuffing Brussels sprouts up your um, <laughs> rear hoots, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? What do you call it? The chutney channel. Yeah. Listen, if, uh, listen, I don't care how good your relationship is. I don't care if y'all hold hands every day, y'all kiss and cuddle. If in the middle of your night, your girl comes down the stairs and catch you stuffing, uh, <laughs> stuffing Brussels sprouts up, up your um, Highway 95, don't even, I know it's your anniversary. <laughs> it's her birthday or whatever is birthday. I know y'all got kids. Just walk to the front door and leave. <laughs> just leave. Don't even just send her the divorce papers in the mail. Give her everything. <laughs> you, know, you don't want to fight. <laughs> just give her everything. Just send your kids a note. Just say daddy was just embarrassed. <laughs> y'all were better off without me. <laughs> you know, you know. Y'all was just better off. Y'all don't need me anymore. <laughs> you know. And just move on and move to like, you know, I don't know, Swaziland, somewhere like that. So no, no one else ever see you again because I'm sorry, I, it's over. If, if, how did, okay. <laughs> when you sitting across the table and you, and think about the level of gift you got to give your girl the next day for her birthday, whatever you bought was not good enough for her to see you stuffing Brussels sprouts up your butt. So I'm just gonna keep it real. <laughs> you know? And then, and they better not been glazed. <laughs> it better not be no gray, glazed Brussels sprouts going up there. I got problems with this. Now, as, as some of us guys have experienced, we we every, all everybody all the all guys want their boys to look pretty you know the, you know the, the twig and berry area you want it to look nice and, and pretty so you know you 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 have that that inner that inner monologue that how impressive it's going to look when it's all getting his hair and nails done you know what i mean so it looks nice and everyone most people have gone down that wrong path where they might have used the wrong product to make it smell good, look good, whatever it is. It always ends the same way. It is rubber. <laughs> it's like you are on fire. You've reached the third level of hell and everything is on fire. I don't know why that area, if you make a mistake, it goes from getting warm to the third level of hell and like that, but it happens. And I feel bad for my man. I have never been to the level where it's like, yo, those Brussels sprouts could be a possible solution. Okay, so thank God I haven't. But at those moments when it happened, if it's happened and you get busted sticking Brussels sprouts up there, you just gotta walk away. You, you understand, can I, can I, Daddy. I, Daddy has, Daddy has, uh, he shamed himself. He does, you know. Daddy has to go away. <laughs> Give little Jimmy a hug. Tap little little Susie on the head, and just leave. Never come back. <laughs> no, do you you know if you ever have that guy that you went to school with, and you're like, what happened to Billy? <laughs> Billy got busted with Brussels sprouts. That's what happened. Billy just disappeared after getting busted with Brussels sprouts and no one ever saw him again. Oh. Just gonna let y'all know. Poor Billy. You know, you know what? 
surprised me is that it, it's the wife's birthday and and often birthdays at least in the u.s right okay. we, we what do we serve cake and ice cream was that the was that the birthday ice cream? <laughs> no, no. So not only not only did she have this, but then her next the next day on her birthday, the ice cream was. Why did they keep the ice cream? I can't move. Past, the, I can't move past that. That's the. You know what? And what happens if you just stuff the ice cream in the refrigerator, planning on throwing it away the next day, and let's say because it's the birthday you got family coming in and somebody gets up in the middle of the night with with the, with, with the grum bellies and knocks off that ice cream and don't even notice exactly that's you know the wife's sister comes down there <laughs> this is her uh, a, a, a double a double dipping of uh of the hagen dazs let's just say <laughs> the, the chunky monkey okay <laughs> you know you can never tell her you can't tell her right no oh hell no you don't listen i'm just gonna look at her and smile <laughs> Every time I, you know, I'm just gonna look at her and smile. I'm not telling anybody at that point. I didn't, I didn't change the whole story to a fictitious point <laughs> where the sister then ate a bowl of chunky monkey that shouldn't have been eaten. So I'm just saying, no, I'm not telling anybody. Oh, or worse yet, it's your mother-in-law. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> always, always bringing the point home for us, Jake. Yeah, nope. We we appreciate. Sometimes I don't know if we appreciate that. You got to keep these things close to the vest. Also, you have to be prepared for situations like this going down. You do? Because, oh yeah, you got to be prepared at all times. If you're sticking your Ben and Jerry's in the ice cream and putting it back in the refrigerator, eventually something's gonna go wrong. <laughs> Just letting y'all know. Ben and Jerry probably don't aren't, aren't thrilled with you using them. <laughs> okay, I think I think it's time to go to break, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> when we come back. Uh, segment five, Florida Man Stories. So stick around. You're watching The Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports, and we will be right back. back to the Andrew Tate show by GSMC Sports. I almost don't want to even reference the last <laughs> segment, but it was a, a, a product review that we, we read through and discussed. Um, look, do some research before you use a hair removal product. That's all I have to say about that. Oh, shizzle on that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and, and, and believe them when they say, it, it, you, you know, whether you work in the North Sea or not, believe them. Yes. Tate, I'm starting to think after getting ready for this this segment today that between Waffle House, which we talked about a couple of days ago, and Florida, we are never going to run out of things oh, to no, talk about. No, 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 no. You these, you these it, last segments. It's it's like a hurricane. It's two fronts that come together to make the perfect storm. Waffle houses <laughs> and Florida and they're in the same area. It's gonna happen. It's just the way it is. You said it hurricane and do you know what immediately i started doing it singing in my head what life is like a hurricane that just hurricane. You, you do understand did that i just age myself you, yeah. oh girl you yes you did it's all good <laughs> it is all good uh, all right so we have two florida man stories for uh for you today the first is a deranged mcdonald's customer choked slugged 
pistol whip and shot off the pinky of another patron. Damn, they're okay. Now this, uh, let me let me set up and get ready for this one. Okay, this is... and the reason the reason <laughs> is a little ridiculous. Wait, 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 sorry. Repeat, repeat the 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 order. Choked, slugged, pistol pistol whipped, and shot off the pinky. You sure that's that sounds that sounds like a sister over there, somebody's mama. <laughs> uh, it was a man. Grandma Beatrice is up, up, up in Wap, up in uh, McDonald. Your grandma's more weight. <laughs> um, Wesley Bullock was okay. hit, and he was he's forty eight. Was hit with aggravated battery and burglary after the wild fast food feud in Zephyrillas, Florida, which is about thirty miles north of Tampa. Um, Bullock was so angry that he didn't get his sauce. So this is all over sauce. He didn't get the sauce with his order that he allegedly walked up the drive, drive up window at the restaurant and began screaming at an employee. Um, when the victim intervened to try to calm him down. Oh, not a good plan victim. Mm -hmm. So that's when the cops said that Bullock went off on the man, grabbing him by the throat, slugging him and getting into a brawl until McDonald's staff staffers were able to break up the scuffle. But that it didn't stop there because Bullock then followed the victim to a nearby <laughs> Speedway gas station where he cut off his car, got out and pointed a silver handgun at the man. Only to have the weapon misfire. So that wasn't as silver. I think I think you had a chrome piece. <laughs> I think that was chrome. It wasn't silver. That okay. was chrome. Okay. For, for those that know, they, they, if yeah. you know, you know. Yeah. Um, undeterred, Bullock then allegedly pistol whipped the victim and recocked the gun. With the two men getting into a life and death fight over the gun. Uh, the victim stated that it was about that time he grabbed the pistol and fought Bullock for control over it because he was in fear for his life. Um, according to an affidavit, he stated he believed he was going to die. I can see that. Bullock allegedly got off one shot, which struck, struck the victim in the pinky. Uh, the wounded pinky, pinky toe or pinky? That just says pinky. So I think it's right. Pinky. Okay, making sure it wasn't a pinky, pinky toe. toe. Okay. Um, the wounded victim managed to get the gun away from his attacker, threw it in his car, and called the cops. Bullock was caught after surveillance camera footage confirmed the victim's wild account. He was ordered held at Pasco County Jail on a $400,000 bond. Sauce. What kind of sauce no. do you think it was? Go ahead. All right. Go ahead. Let me let me say this. You have the floor. You know who I blame? You're gonna tell me. I blame McDonald's. I'm sure. They this do. is clearly a McDonald's issue. How many times have you gone to get some, get your nuggets on, get your nug nugs on, and they're like, you order a you order a twenty piece nugget and they only give you one dipping sauce. Eventually, you're gonna get upset. You should be allowed more dipping sauces. And that's eventually over years of ordering chicken nug nugs and not getting enough sauces. Next thing you know, a dude snaps. Now he got his chrome piece out pistol whipping somebody and is rolled over to the next gas station. That's the reason why I blame McDonald's. Free up, you know, there should be a campaign to free the sauce. If you for every, I say, listen, I'm a I'm a I'm a sauce dipper. So you should be allowed a bottle, uh, not a bottle. <laughs> the bottle may be a little extreme. Yeah, I know. Get, it's true. <laughs> bottle of your order. You know, that's not a bad plan. You should be able to order a bottle of sauce to go <laughs> with your twenty piece nugget. But and it'd be a little cash cow for him. But if you if you order a twenty piece. You should be able to get at least six sauces. <laughs> That's all I'm saying. Okay, so you're going like every three nuggets. I was thinking yes. four, so four, every three five things. things of sauce. But yeah, okay. You see, because I'm not. If it's my if it's my nuggets and I'm not sharing, I'm gonna dip one bite and half, rotate to a clean end, <laughs> dip into another sauce. So I'm getting multiple sauces. I like a lot of I like a lot of flavors with my twenty piece nuggets. So. I'm saying it's McDonald's fault because they don't give enough sauces out. So this this did not have to escalate to this level if they just would have gave the man a proper number of sauces. Now there's somebody missing a pinky toe or pinky <laughs> over the fact that they didn't get enough, that didn't get enough chicken nuggets. Now I admit my man might have been a little wrong for bringing out the chrome piece on him.
<laughs> that's where you know but things that escalated over all these years of not getting enough of them sauces and made them you know made them snap a little bit now yeah second of all if you're gonna go there and you're gonna try to choke somebody out and bring out your chrome piece don't get beat up <laughs> sounds like my man my man took things too far got beat down got his got his pinky shot off and he's gonna go to jail no 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 the victim got his pinky shot off okay the victim did okay yeah, he did get beat down a little bit and um okay yeah, so he 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 did get beat he, but because initially the, initially the victim tried to subdue him and like you know there was there was a confrontation and then then the, the, the employees intervened but yeah second thing he also the gun also misfired at first so he he's having some issues second thing this is a this is a this is a public service announcement from the sh from from me to America. The more you know. No good deed goes unpunished. Yeah. Stop stop trying to break up these situations. I'm gonna I'm come in and be Mr. Good Samaritan. Next thing you know, you're getting your pinky toe shot off. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want, don't be getting it. You just stay out of it. If you're an employee at the company, you're a McDonald's employee. Here's another public service announcement. Give out sauce. <laughs> give out more sauce. Yes, give out more sauce. That's one. And two, they're not paying you enough to get your pinky toe shot off. So let my man go. Let him do it. Let him vent. But you don't need to get involved and lose a pinky toe or pinky or get into, get into, get, get into some fisticuffs over some, some nugget sauce. Just letting y'all know, don't do it. Okay. This is from your this is from your boy Tate. Step away. Words of advice. All right. <laughs> well, our second floor man didn't need any sauce. Oh, he might have been on some sauce. Both. Yeah. <laughs> oh, so, yeah, yes. It, it, a drugged out floor man. That's oh what it starts. boy. He probably made that stuff in his basement. Was busted following <laughs> an attack on a sheriff's deputy at a local music festival. Okay. <clears throat> James Anderson, a volunteer at the Vortex Springs Soul Fest, was charged with resisting arrest and aggravated battery of a law enforcement officer at the festival. The Holmes County Sheriff's Office said Anderson was allegedly under the influence of PCP, oh. LSD, oh. ketamine, mushrooms, and ecstasy. He did the whole alphabet. He did. He, he did the A through, to, A through Z drugs. He is charged with biting off a piece of a deputy's head. What? What? The deputy, whose name was not released, was on patrol at the event when he got into a scuffle with the rowdy Anderson. Captain Peahead, because he, he got a small head and have someone bite off a piece of your head. Well, think of a chunk, no? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Anderson had to be some dude with a taser after taking the chunk out of the cop's head. Mm -mm. Nope, nope. Festival goer, there's always going to be some positivity and there's going to be some negativity. <laughs> it's just part of how the festival world works. Okay, I saw a picture, which notice there's no slideshow with this. Wait. I didn't think you needed it. No, literally there is a chunk out of this man, no. back of this man's head. Here, the problem I have with the nice officer, I'm gonna defend the officer. A lot of times people don't defend the cops enough. Sure. But officer, chunk missing his head <laughs> he tased him that shows this is a good cop because if it had been officer tate i'd have pulled out my piece it, i'd have bust a couple caps in him i'm sorry you can't take you can't take a chunk out of my melon and think you're not gonna get you you're gonna get some you're not gonna get no lead i'm sorry you're getting lead if you're taking a chunk out of my head Woo. That rhyme, I love that. <laughs> that is my new shirt. Your sound bite of the day. Expect some lead if you take a chunk out of my head. That is the shirt of the day, ladies and gentlemen. Are we gonna have merch now? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm dead serious. First, and also, you said LSD, PCP, DDT, <laughs> ABC. <laughs> he he went with all he went with all of them. When if you're doing that much in drugs, 
you didn't already made decision, bad decisions in your life. And one of them is looking at a cop's head and think it's a tasty snack. <laughs> you know, lock this dude up, throw away the key, get him some treatment, whatever. I feel bad for Officer Chunk a lot <laughs> because, because somebody bit him in the head. But I do, I think this this cop needs um, like an accommodation or something because the fact that he kept this cool enough and pulled his taser, I don't know if I'd have been the same, I'd have been the same level. I'd have pulled the taser been like, oh, I don't need that today and <laughs> tossed it over my shoulder and went for the heat. I'm just saying. <laughs> Uh, on the other hand, this guy didn't need any sauce. <laughs> no, he would. He came pre-sauce. Oh, <laughs> His nuggets came pre-sauce. <laughs> what does that even mean? <laughs> I'm sorry. Listen, everyone. These stories are for entertainment purposes. I hope Ch uh, Officer Chunk a lot <laughs> is okay. I hope my man that did the alphabet drugs, I hope he gets the treatment that he needs. We're just having a good time on a bad situation. That's all. Yeah, don't and don't do drugs. Don't just, no, don't forget do that. Any, don't bite people's heads. Oh, yeah, but don't okay. do this person that leads the head. <laughs> Get, the moral of the story is give McDonald's give more sauces and people Drugs are bad and don't bite people's heads. Okay. All right. That's that's it. Public service announcements. So um, thank you for tuning in to the Andrew Tate Show by GSMC Sports. Uh, your support means a lot to us. We greatly appreciate it. So please remember to subscribe and follow this show on wherever you are listening or watching it. Um, also, if you want to, uh, like Tate said, leave that positive review, we really appreciate it. And it really does help get this show out to more listeners and watchers. It makes a difference. We also invite you to follow us on social media, Facebook, X, Instagram, and TikTok. You can find more content and updates. Thank you for joining us for this wild ride through everything. Uh, we hope you have a wonderful rest of your day. Chunky monkey. <laughs> <laughs>